Alright, so I'm getting the toilet up. Yours is going to be a one piece. You might need some help. But. So now, since you got that centered on your. This is the hardest part. You want to be nice and centered on those bolts. That looks pretty even when I look at this side. That means my little flange is right down there over that hole. And you can hear <laughs> it's already down, but I know it's mashed it because I already measured that that's how far up it was sticking. So you can see why it would have needed it because this one is so much skinnier, which I already showed you some pictures of. This was only sticking up above the bottom of this rim about that far. And this, the other one I just put on was probably about this far above it. So it's mashed on there now. Now you want to, you want to get up here and if you look, at these bolts, they look pretty even centered in this slot this way and and this way. Now I'm just standing back looking at the toilet and it looks straight with the wall there. Everything looks real nice. This is apparently fairly flat here. <laughs> and then you just put these on. And they really can just about go any way. Um, these little wing nuts. Put a washer on. I think yours had bolts with it. But hopefully it doesn't, it comes with better ones than mine. Now sometimes that's kind of held, held up a little bit. The floor might be out of level and stuff, so you got to be really careful when you're tightening these down and not get crazy with it. And you tighten them kind of evenly. And you're going to wind up having to caulk all of this, this here too. In fact, what I usually do is, once I've got it on here, and tighten down, and I'm just hand tightening it kind of. Now you want to wiggle it. Usually they'll wiggle a little. Mine is in, is in really good shape here. 99 times out of 100, the one that was upstairs did wiggle a little bit. This is really stout there, so that's pretty good. So what I'll do later, um, go ahead and pause that for a moment. Okay, so and I'll give you a few of these. I use cedar shims myself. You can see these have a really nice little thin right part right here. So I get some really good shims, pick out some decent ones. And what I'll do is typically there'll be a little gap, some gaps here. And I may I may not even have to do it on this one. I might put one here anyway. So what I'll do is find some little gaps. kind of shove it under a little bit and there is one back there too I'm 
Okay. So I'll get I'll get a, a you know a fair amount of those and some like the one upstairs I've got them all under here. Maybe there's one. I can put one there. And this is really skinny. I mean that one going under there doesn't need it. A lot of times there'll be a, a little spot you'll need it to be right where a joint is in the uh, tile. So I'm just giving a little bit right there. And pull another decent one out of here. Let's see if I can find more places. Oh yeah, there's some back there. It's the space back there. I gotta break it off because it won't fit. See that? And I'll just kind of shove it under. When I'm done, what I'll do is I'll take these, a real sharp knife, put in a nice new blade in your thing, and be very close and careful. Just cut a little bit like that. And that stays in there. Okay, later on, when I'm done here, and it's one of the things that takes probably the most skill, is I'll take some caulk, a, some silicone, clear silicone caulk, with the tip cut really small, and I will caulk along here very carefully. And then you have to wipe too. You'll be wiping, get yourself a piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper or something. You'll wipe a little, don't let too much build up on your finger. And then just keep doing like that. Because you want as little as possible in there, but enough to, you want it very neat. You know, even after you've cleaned it away, you might then go back one more time. You might go back the other direction. But the key is cutting a small tip on your caulk gun. This is this is not a caulk tube, but you know, pretend it is. Okay.